Hi, I'm Scott Holliday from the Rival Sons. I play guitar and uh, I was born in Covina, California, United States, and uh, grew up mainly in uh, Orange County, California. Um, I started playing guitar when I was about 11, 12 years old, and I'm uh, pretty, pretty serious about it, 12, 13. I can't really say why I started playing the guitar. It's kind of trivial. There's no musicians in my family except for an uncle that I don't see much. And uh, uh, yeah, there was a lot of music in all my families. My, uh, my mother's husband, first husband, second husband, I guess technically, my first remarriage. That family had a lot of uh, music in their lives and kind of inspired me with a lot of old rock and roll. And, uh, I think I was brainwashed at a young age to, to be a, an advocate for rock and roll, and just I just picked the guitar. I was turned on, you know, turned on by by uh, all those early bands. Just something that's mysterious to me, but it was some kind of driving force that made me want to do it. That I don't know about. Absolutely, my family is ultra supportive. You know, since I've done I've done this since I was about 12 years old pretty crazy and as mysterious as it was to me, I think it was equally mysterious to them why I was so driven to do it. And uh, I left school early, high school early, graduated early to, to continue playing guitar with the band and go with the band and play around. And uh, to this point, they're ultra supportive. Uh, it was great recording in Nashville. Um, in one sense, it's, it's basically the musical hub these days of, of the United States. <clears throat> In another sense, a uh, way to be away from, from our families and loved ones for that month, so that made it a little more difficult, but uh, it, was, it was a great place to go to make a record. Music is everywhere in that town. I mean, if you're going to pick a place, that's it. Everyone plays, everyone records, everyone, you know, there's just studios. There's blocks where every house on this block is a studio or a mixing room or something, so um, that was cool. And of course, uh, the main reason we went to Nashville was to work with our producer, Dave Cobb, who we've done four records with now. Uh, and, and since we're making our records live, I, I think it's pretty rare these days to find a producer that understands how to make a record like that, how to make a record on the spot, how to just get a band in a room and write songs in a moment and capture them the, uh, uh, the proper way, like a finished album should sound. Um, we were lucky that Dave had serendipitously come across Vance Powell, who was in Nashville, and works with some of our favorite people, Jack White, James Leon, on and on. Uh, he has a great resume. Um, actually, on pressure and time, we had aimed at some of the work that Vance had done previously uh, with, with drum sounds, with recording techniques, and then Dave moved to Nashville, befriended him, and worked on different records, and uh, showed him us and Vance was uh, eager to work on this record so it was just all a great perfect connection. Well the studio we worked at most of the equipment was Dave's uh, collection. This consists of uh, uh, outboard gear, preamps, compressors, and cues from, uh, from the original DECA, from uh, Nashville's uh, Capital, from uh, Sun Records, just all sorts of sources. He's just dug up all this really, really amazing studio equipment. Yeah, everyone thinks we want to make an old sounding record because we use old equipment, but actually that stuff just sounds the best. It's not used because we want to make an old record. It's used because we want to make a record that sounds good, sounds current and good. I think uh, danger in rock and roll and music in general is uh, uh, the desire and the ability to take chances with uh, the choices you make musically, you know? Being not afraid to make mistakes. Um, you know, a, a lot of the early records that, that we love were made in one day. You will make the whole record in one day. To me, that's dangerous. This is a band that just is gonna go in and record, and they have to be good, they have to be oiled, they have to perform, you know? So that's dangerous. You can hear mistakes on those old recordings, and they just left them and went with it. Um, I think. We try to continue that tradition in uh, writing our records on the spot, not having material prepared before we come in, and just kind of really putting ourselves to the test and seeing uh, 
or something good can happen. It could, it could definitely go terribly wrong at any moment. We're certainly not making the statement to uh, stick our chest out or have bravado, but that is the way we've worked. We, we go into the studio and uh, write our records on the spot. That's how we do it. That's how we've decided to do it early on. And uh, it allows us to keep that element of raw and of visceral, unadulterated energy in the music. You know, the guys I, I get to work with are pretty great at what they do. And uh, if we had six months to, to write and then another six months to record, uh, we could use that. Uh, I think we would run the, the chance that we, it, it might become what I think a lot of modern rock and roll and music in general has become overworked, overproduced, overwritten, just overthought in general. So yeah, this decision uh, to write on the spot is something we're conscious of and, and going for. It's part of the aesthetic of the process.